Welcome to part 3. In this video, I'm going to explain the difference between nominal and effective rates so you never get confused or caught out again. I will show you a formula to convert any nominal rate to an effective one or vice versa. I will also share some unique examples that you may get in an exam. Let's look at effective rates. So these are interest rates where the interest is paid once per period. And it tells you the actual interest you earned over that entire period. So we've been using this all along in parts 1 and 2. For example, if you've got an interest rate of 10%, we know that the interest is paid once at the end of the year. And when we have a discount rate, the interest is paid once at the beginning of the year. So we can assume that these are effective because we are not told anything else. And again, our period year is a year. So recapping from parts 1 and 2, we've always been using effective rates because we've been given them. And the important thing to note is that we need to use effective rates when we are trying to calculate present values and future values. So this is why it's important to know the difference between effective rates and nominal rates and how to move between them. So let's look at nominal rates. A nominal interest rate is where the interest is paid P times per measurement period or it's paid p -thly. So we need to be told what the measurement period is and we know that it's going to be paid more than once a year or less than once a year because if it's paid once a year then we just have an effective rate. So nominal rates are usually expressed as an annual rate where you have something per annum and then you are told the number of interest payments per year or per period, whatever the period is. And this is basically telling us we have P interest payments in our measurement period. So nominal rates are often quoted for advertising or marketing purposes and we'll see later why this is such. We can see in this example that our nominal rate is specified per annum, that's our measurement period, and we are also told that it's compounded or convertible monthly. So all that really means is that interest is paid monthly, which means there are 12 interest payments per annum. So if our measurement period is a year, we have P interest payments in that year. So we can assume that these interest payments are made at the end of each month because we are not told otherwise. What's important here is our notation. We use IP to denote our nominal interest rate. And the P is telling us that there are P interest payments in our measurement period. So we are really interested in effective rates because we need to use effective rates in our calculations. So what we need to understand is how to convert a nominal rate to an effective rate to suit our needs. So here, if we've got a nominal rate of 6% per annum, then our nominal rate divided by P or 12 will give us our effective rate P3 or effective rate per month. So this is quite easy to do. You take your IP and you divide it by P. Now you've got an effective rate per month or P3. So what about an effective rate for the whole measurement period, in this case per annum? So to work this out, we basically need to calculate what we would earn as a return over 12 months. To do this, we use our compound interest formula. We have an effective rate per month and we know that there are 12 months in a year in our measurement period. So we really just work out the future value using that monthly effective rate. And we can use a principle of one and we'll find that this is equal to 1.061 with the rest of the decimals. So by the equivalence principle, we've shown that $1 grows to 1.0616 over a year. This tells us by the equivalence principle, we need to have an interest rate equal to 6.16% as our annual effective interest rate, because our annual effective interest rate tells us what we actually earned over that period, which we've worked out. So what's the point of all of this? Why do we have nominal rates if we need to use effective rates in our calculation? It really comes down to simple, simpler marketing, right? If bank A advertises 6% per annum with some fine print, it's a lot cleaner and simpler than bank B advertising an effective rate per annum. Even though technically that's what you will earn, it's considered more technical and less market friendly. So let's summarize the difference between the two rates. If you've got a nominal interest rate per annum, it's quite easy to calculate the effective rate peakly because we simply just divide it by P. But we don't know exactly what the annual effective rate is and we'll have to do a bit more calculations to find that out. Our nominal rate does not consider the compounding effect. 
This is quite an important thing to note and I will look at this in more detail later. Our effective interest rate per annum on the other hand gives us the actual compound return that we earned over the entire measurement period. But what we don't know very easily is what the Peatley effective is. So we'll have to calculate that. So we've showed already how to move from a nominal rate to an effective rate. And we can generalize this to a formula which basically applies the compound interest formula for interest payments of IP over P for P periods. And I can draw a timeline to show this. So the important thing to note here, this formula is something that you need to memorize and remember because this is how you move from nominal interest rates to effective interest rates. So let's look at the formula in a bit more detail. We know that P is our number of interest payments per period or the number of compounding periods. We know that IP by itself is our nominal rate per period convertible P3. I is our effective interest rate per period. So generally our period is per annum. Now IP divided by P we know is our effective rate P3. So this is quite easy to calculate. So given an interest rate, we can find the nominal interest rate by rearranging this formula quite simply. Raising both sides to the power 1 over P and then moving the P to the other side. And we've got IP is equal to as follows. So given the one, you can work out the other by rearranging your formula. We also have nominal and effective discount rates. And this works in the same way as interest rates, but with a different formula. Note that we have negative signs in these places. So again, DP by itself is the nominal discount rate per period. And the period could be per annum or whatever it is, and it's compounded peatly. And D here is simply our effective discount rate. So again, if you're given the one, you can move to the other using this formula. But what would be useful to know or to have is a relationship between nominal and effective discount rates and nominal and effective interest rates. So we already know that 1 minus D is equal to V. And V, as we know, is 1 over 1 plus I. So substituting this into the formula, we now have our nominal discount rate in terms of our interest rate. And again, we can move things around to get our nominal discount rate in terms of our interest rate. And then we can substitute in our previous formula that shows us what our nominal interest rate is. Now, this is a very important formula because now we have a formula that relates all of these things together. So coming back to nominal and effective rates, if P is greater than one, we will then have more time to compound our interest payments. And then this will mean that our effective interest rate will always be higher than our nominal interest rate. And we've seen this in, a, in our previous example where we had IP is equal to six, but our effective interest rate was higher. What happens if our P is less than one? Which may sound weird because it is, but here's an example. Biennial means once every two years. And basically, if we have interest that's paid once every two years, then our P will technically be less than one. So if our measurement period is in years, in other words, we're given a nominal interest rate per annum, then our P becomes a half. And if we do the calculations, we will see that our effective interest rate is 5.83, which is less than our nominal rate. We also see that our effective P3 interest rate is 12%, which makes sense. So be on the lookout for these types of questions because this is going to be the cases where your P is less than one. Another curveball question is when there's no compounding being taken place. For example, if you use a bank account example where interest is paid monthly, but then the interest is withdrawn as soon as it's earned, this means that there's no compounding of interest taking place. In other words, only the principal continues to earn interest. And using an example with a principal of $100, we see that at this interest rate, our interest payments are 50 cents per month. Given that we are removing the interest as soon as it's earned, only the principal earns interest each month, which means that we're left with 12 interest payments of 50 cents or $6 in interest at the end of the year. And we see that this is just our nominal rate per annum. And this makes sense because our nominal rate assumes that there are, there's no compounding taking place. So this is like a curveball question where the examiner has purposefully allowed that no compounding takes place. So if you know what you're doing, you can clearly identify that you're just going to have your nominal rate at the end. So in this previous example, we've seen that our nominal rate is just an expression for the annualized Peatley effective interest rate. In other words, 
If we take our pthly effective rate and we multiply it by p, we will then get our nominal rate. So what we are doing is we're taking the pthly effective rate and we're just annualizing it. We're showing it as a rate per annum, even though it's not an effective rate. And we see that there are various terminology used in the industry to talk about nominal rates, APR being one of them and NACM being another. NACM is a nominal rate per annum and it's telling you that it's compounded monthly. So it's basically giving you I-12. So when you see these things on brochures or marketing, you know that they are quoting a nominal rate. So to summarize what we've learned, nominal rates are used for marketing purposes, and they're always quoted with the measurement period and the number of interest payments. Usually this me measurement period is per annum, and interest payments can vary depending on the situation. We've seen where P can be a half if it's biannual, or even one third if it's triennial. So also don't get confused between biannual and biennial. We also saw that in order to accumulate a discount, we need to use effective rates. So whenever we try to work out the present value or future value, we need to make sure that we are using effective interest rates. We've got this formula to move between nominal and effective rates, and this is something that we want to memorize. We've also got this formula for our discount rates, and we've seen how we can adapt this and to find the relationship between interest rates. So a top tip is if you're writing an exam and you've got access to the formula and tables for examinations, often used by the institute and faculty of actuaries you will have the formula for nominal interest rates on the relevant page so if you forget you can always look it up there then you know your normal typical easy exam questions and i say easy because if you know what you're doing they are quite easy it involves given you know you being given a certain rate either interest rate or discount rate and you're being asked to calculate other rates so you're given a nominal rate and then you're asked to work out the future value of a series of cash flows now you know you need to convert that nominal rate into effective rate first. So this formula here is one that you want to memorize because it will help you to move between any discount rate or interest rate with no problems. You also want to remember to store your values on the calculator because there are lots of decimals when calculating these interest rates, especially effective rates. And that's it for part three and that's it for section one. So if you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends. Please help the channel grow by subscribing, liking and sharing it 